Hey folks, welcome back. In this video, we're going to look at P-type doping for semiconductors. So let's get into it. Now, before we look at P-type doping for semiconductors, it's worth reminding ourselves the purpose of doping a semiconductor material in the first place. So remember, we may dope a semiconductor material in order to increase its conductivity or reduce its resistance. So for P-type doping, it says that if a group 3 element, such as boron, which has three outer electrons, is introduced into the crystal lattice, then its three outer electrons will bond covalently with the silicon atoms. And remember, the silicon atoms have four outer electrons or valence electrons. So we've actually introduced a boron nucleus in here, which only has three outer electrons. And this means that this creates a hole in the crystal lattice where an electron is missing. So here I've drawn the hole as a sort of larger purple circle. And what this means is that an electron from the next atom can then move into this hole. And thus conduction can take place by the movement of positive holes. So if this is our hole here, then this electron here, say, could move into this hole to fill the hole. And that means that we would then have a hole at this position. And if there's a hole at that position, then an electron over here somewhere might go and jump into that hole. And then the hole is then created at that new position. So it's almost like through the movement of electrons to fill the holes in our crystal lattice structure, we can think about it as being the holes that are actually moving themselves. So again, since the ability of the material to conduct is increased, this time through the movement of positively charged holes, the resistance of the semiconductor is therefore reduced. So again, we've got increased conductivity and therefore the resistance of the material decreases. The addition of an impurity like boron to an intrinsic semiconductor is called P-type doping. In P-type semiconductors, most conduction takes place by the movement of holes, which are positively charged. The majority charge carriers in a P-type semiconductor are therefore holes. And one way to think about this is that holes are positively charged, which is the opposite charge to electrons, and P is obviously the first letter of positive or positively. But remember, just because the majority charge carriers are holes in the P-type semiconductor, this does not mean P-type semiconductor materials are positively charged. Remember, both P-type and N-type semiconductors are both neutral. Lastly, it's worth noting that in P-type doping, it's really the electrons that are moving to fill the holes, but we can think of the holes themselves as being positively charged particles moving in the opposite direction to the electrons. And sometimes it's easier just to think about the holes themselves as being particles that can move, as opposed to just the electrons filling the holes, which cause the holes to appear at different points in the lattice as the electrons move. Just to show you a quick simulation to help you visualize this. So let's say we've got a material here with lots of silicon atoms where the black dots represent our nuclei and the red dots represent the electrons. If I carry out p-type doping on this material then we could introduce say an indium nucleus and because indium is a group 3 atom with only three outer electrons as opposed to the four outer electrons for silicon there's a hole created in the crystal lattice structure. So if I click play here we can see that we get the movement of an electron to fill this hole then this hole, then this hole, then this hole, and so on. And by the movement of electrons to fill the hole that is created at each point, we essentially get the movement of charge, which is conduction. That's all for this video, folks. Thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video one of these, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.